come together in Christmas. Thank you, James. So uh, John 3.16, a lot of us are probably familiar with it. Or, you know, we see the, the on some sports, we see 3.16, and sometimes we're like, why did they put that number? But for the Christians, there's a very significant thing about John 3.16. And it goes something like this. If you know it, say it with me. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him will not perish but have everlasting life. So this Christmas, you know, um, a lot of us are going to be giving gifts and wanting gifts. Any, anybody have any Christmas wish list? Some of the young people over here, or even you know, younger at heart. PSP four. Oh no, three. A lot of times, you know, basically whatever it is that you want, or even though you already have it. Um, haven't you ever realized that it doesn't really last, you know, mm -hmm. those things that we get, um, sometimes, yeah, it, it feels good to have it, but once you have it, it loses its value, and then you wa end up wanting something more, that's why they're always coming up with new, uh, with, with the young people, like, Playstations, 3, 4, I don't know, in the next couple of years, they're gonna come up with another video games, because, uh, even, even with the TV, with the entertainment, we have, like, digital, that are coming out, and I3D, so mm -hmm. all these things are still trying to uh, make us happy in a way. All of us are seeking that kind of happiness that we want in life. And, and then once we have it, it's like, eh, what else is new? What else is going to come up? You know, mm -hmm. there's always something that we want to fill our hearts with. The problem is this world cannot fill that heart because there's something bigger in our heart that, needs to, that, that can only fill it, and it's that relationship with God. That's the most mm -hmm. important thing. And this Christmas, you know, we talk about giving well god is the first one who actually gave you know he gave his life he gave his son to mm -hmm. us by dying on that cross so the thing is all of us if we really look at ourselves we have this problem you know what that problem is starts with an s ends with an n sin s-i-n not your social insurance number but more specific it's um well if i ask you this question have you ever told a lie that young man over there, what's your name? <laughs> what's that? Vala. 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 Have you ever told a lie? He never. Yes. 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 So, eh, what did that make you? A liar? A liar. A liar. How about another one over here? Have you ever stolen anything? Yes, that's Who? you. you. <laughs> <laughs> Whether it's a big or small item, yeah. you have. Yeah. What does that make you? I feel bad. <laughs> I feel bad. <laughs> bad. And, and stealer, you, yeah. a stealer, stealer or a thief. Yeah. Right? Yeah. How about using God's name in vain? Oh my, you know, yeah. or Jesus. Yeah. We, we've done that. You know, no. I'm not going to point out names. No. You search your heart, you know. You know what we've done? We've actually taken God's holy name, the God who gave us life, our family, all the good things that we have. Mm -hmm. The Bible talks about every good and perfect gift comes from the Lord. <laughs> And yet when we, when we use this name in vain, we're actually taking this like a rose and stepping on it, you know? That's what we're doing when we use God's name in vain. And, and the Bible talks about how he who blasphemes God's name will not inherit the kingdom of God. Mm. See, that's the thing I talk about problem we have. <clears throat> We've sinned against God, all of us. The Bible talks about all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory standards. You know what's that standards? The Ten Commandments. We've only talked about three of them. And all of us have admitted that we've lied, we've stolen, we've used God's name in vain, right? So on Judgment Day, we're going to be guilty. And, and we're going to end up being punished for our sins, right? And that punishment is hell. But God so loved the world that He does not want His creation to go to hell. He provided His Son Jesus to die on that cross and pay the penalty for our sin. That's why He died on that cross. That's why He came, right? Emmanuel, we hear it during Christmas time, God with us. God came from heaven to be with us, to bring us to Him, to have that relationship with Him. It's not about being religion, because no matter how good you try to be, no matter how much church you go into, or, um, you know, hey God, look at me, I, I, I go to church, or, or this and that. Mm -hmm. See, God still sees that sin in our hearts, that hatred. Have you ever killed anyone? No, right? But Jesus said, whoever has hatred, not yet. All right, so, but still, yeah, you know. It, but... Jesus talks about how if you are angry, you're in danger of judgment. If you have hatred in your heart for someone, you have already committed murder, right? Mm -hmm. So God is serious about sin. There's no such thing as big or small sins. To God, sin is sin. And we are separated from God because of our sin. One more. Um, adultery. Some of us young people here are not married, right? So um, you've never committed that, right? You never cheated on your... But Jesus said, see, Jesus said, whoever looks upon a woman and lusts after her, 
you have already committed adultery. Some of us older here, you know, um, we can all, we're not going to say it, but like, if you really search your heart, you have committed adultery in your heart. And again, I just talk about that we're all guilty of sin. Right? And, and, but the thing is, God so loved us that uh, He paid the penalty for our sin. It should be us on the cross, you know. <coughs> but because of God's love, and then I'm going to repeat that verse, John 3.16, for God so loved the world, that's each of us here, that He gave His Son. Whoever believes in Him will not perish, but have everlasting life. That's how much God loves you. You know, you deserve punishment, but yet he gave you mercy. He gave us grace. Right? And that love is shown to us on that cross. And it's a gift. God is giving you that gift. All you have to do is repent of your sin. Trust in him. You know, as you would, um, if you, if, okay, this is another illustration in a way that, that um, if we're on a plane, all of us, and you're seated on a plane, and somebody tells you the, the, the plane is going to crash, and there's a parachute under your seat. What are you going to do with that parachute? You grab the parachute. You put it on. Right? No. You don't drop it. If, if you know you're going to crash, somebody, you're going to put on that parachute before you jump because you know that parachute is going to save you. Right? Um, putting on Christ, believing in Jesus Christ, is, is that essence of putting on the parachute. You know, you, many people say they believe in Jesus Christ, but unless you put your faith in Him, in the essence of putting that parachute on. So when you leave this life, you are secure because you have the parachute. You are secure because you have Christ. Because you have that gift, God's eternal life in your heart. And that's the meaning of Christmas. You know? So this whole season of Christmas, hopefully um, you guys really think about that. Have I opened my heart to Jesus? Have I repented of my sin and trusted Him? Have I given Him my life and believed that He died on that cross and paid the penalty for my sin? You know, That's the gospel. Jesus Christ died on the cross, paid the penalty. Three days later, he rose again from the dead so that we could be saved. Jesus is called the Savior of the world. Um, in one verse of the scripture regarding the beginning of Christmas, uh, Mary was told, you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sin. That's what Jesus did to us. He saved us from our sins. He wants to give us a new heart and a new desire to obey him. So even, even as you go along this Christmas, read the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Start with John. Um, that's, that's a very good passage or a gospel to begin with in the New Testament. And you'd be amazed at what God will do in your life, what He will reveal in your life once you open your heart to Him. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen.